Hi everyone, it's me Ola here. You're welcome to my channel. In this video, we are going to talk about a possessive Ukrainian uh, pronoun, svi. And also we will try to figure out where do we use svi and where do we use tvi. I figure uh, that for uh, learners whose language isn't similar to Ukrainian, this concept might be not very easy to grasp on. Well, I mean, come on, there is a meme existence, so that's a legit matter we are talking now. So yeah, in this video, I'm going to try and take a challenge of changing your mind and proving to you that this is not as hard as it seems. And I will truly appreciate if after watching this video, you will let me know in the comments down below, did I succeed or did I fail? And before we start learning, I would like to take a moment to say thank you to everybody who has supported my previous video with a like, with a comment. It truly means a lot. You know that every interaction of you with me as a content creator is letting YouTube know that my uh, content might be good and might be useful and maybe more people would like to see it. And it helps my channel develop. So... Um, I truly appreciate your comments, so if you have nothing to say on the subject, just write anything. And also another little thing, if you enjoy my content and would like to support it financially, you can do that as well on my Patreon. I will leave the link to my Patreon as well as link to all of my other social media down below. And also for, with all my patrons, I am sharing all the materials that I'm using uh, for my videos. So for instance, you can uh, follow the link, become my patron, and this particular presentation as well as all the others will be available for you to download just in case if you are the type of of a student who doesn't like to take the notes of their own. And now we can finally start learning. Uh, so before we start talking about svi, svoja, svoje, svojim, I assume that you know Ukrainian uh, possessive pronouns, such as uh, mi, tvi, yoho, yi, nas, vas, yichni, etc. So if you aren't familiar with those yet, I think it's too early for you to watch this video and I will leave you the link somewhere here to be found or where you can watch my video on possessive pronouns and then come back and watch this one. So yeah, in Ukrainian we have a number of possessive pronouns. You can see them all in the table. You can see them on your screen. And as you can tell, their form depends greatly on the... Um, gender, whether it's masculine, cholovice read, or feminine, zhinoche read, or neuter, saradni read. It also depends on a number, whether it's singular or plural, right? And now I'm going to tell you one thing. Each of these possessive Ukrainian pronouns you can change with svi, svoja, svoje, svoji. Okay, and this svi, svoja, svoje, svoji will receive the exact same meaning of the pronoun that you interchanged it with. Okay, so svi can either mean jichni, nash, tvi, mi, and svoja can mean vasha, jiji, joho, tvoja, moja, svoje can mean jichni, jiji. And svoji can also mean one of these, like jichni, vashi, nashi, joho, jiji, etc. Okay, so can you always make a change like that? No. A change like that can happen only under certain conditions. So what are these conditions? Let us figure that out. So svi or svoja, svoje, svoji, depending, right, on the gender, is a reflexive possessive pronoun in Ukrainian. Okay, so what is reflexive? What are we thinking when we hear reflexive, right? We think reflection. For instance, a reflection in a mirror. Something that's very similar, right? Something that's the same as you, but in a different position. Something in a mirror that if you point at that, it will point back at you, okay? It literally looks at you and says, hey, back at you. So when is a possessive reflexive um, pronouns should be used? It should be used when the subject of a sentence and a possessive pronoun are pointing at the same person. The sort of reflection is happening, right? The subject 
and the possessive pronoun are pointing at the same person, are the same person. Now let's take a closer look at some examples. For instance, я живу у своєму будинку. I live in my house or I live in my own house, we can say as well. So, if we had to translate it literally from English, right, we would say я живу у моєму будинку because my translates as me in Ukrainian, right? But we would say моєму because cases, but worry not, I got you covered, we are going to talk about cases in the very end of this video. Now we are just going to understand the concept, where should we use svi? And then we will worry about cases. But let us take a closer look at this sentence. Я живу у своєму будинку. I live in my house. So who is the subject of this sentence? Я, I. And to whom does the house belong? My house, mi budinok. So the house belongs to me as well. So I am the subject and the house belongs to me as well. So the subject and the possessive pronoun are pointing at the same person, at ya, right? In this case, the reflection is happening, right? They are pointing at the same person. The reflection is happening. Therefore, we need to change the normal um, possessive pronoun mojemu to svojemu because reflection. Next, він живе у своєму будинку. He lives in his own house or he lives in his house. Again, if we were to translate this sentence from English, literally, we would say він живе у його будинку, right? Because his means його, a normal possessive pronoun. But let's take a closer look. Він живе у своєму будинку. Who is the subject of this sentence? Він, he. And to whom does the house belong? To him as well. It's his house, right? So again, the subject and the possessive pronoun are pointing at the same person, are sort of different sides of the same person. So the reflection is happening here and that is why we use um, svojemu instead of yoho, the normal possessive pronoun. We use the reflexive one because the reflection is happening, because the subject and the possessor, somebody who possesses the thing, are the same person. Now, another instance. Вона зараз у своїй кімнаті. She's in her room now. Okay? Вона зараз у своїй кімнаті. Let's think who is the subject of this sentence. Вона. And to whom does the room belong? To her. It's her room, right? So, if we were to translate this sentence from English literally, we would say вона зараз у її кімнаті. But that is not correct. We should say Вона зараз у своїй кімнаті, because the reflection is happening here. And we use normal possessive pronouns when the subject does not match the possessive pronoun in person, right? So, when the subject and the owner, the possessor, somebody who possesses the thing, are different persons. For instance, Я живу у їхньому будинку. I live in their house. Who is the subject? Я, I, right? I live in the house. But to whom does the house belong? It's their house, right? Their house. So, the subject and the possessive pronoun are pointing at different people. The subject is я, but the possessive pronoun is pointing at them. It's their house, okay? Different people. So that's a normal situation. There is no reflection. And that's why we are using a normal pronoun їхній or їхньому because cases, you know. Next, він живе у нашому будинку. He lives in our house. Він живе у нашому будинку. Who is the subject? He. Uh, and uh, to whom does the house belong? Our. It's our house. To us. The house belongs to us. So then again, the subject is pointing at him and the possessive pronoun is pointing in at us, saying it's our house. So the normal situation, we are using a normal possessive pronoun. Він живе у нашому будинку. Next, вона живе у його будинку. She lives in his house. Again, works exactly as it works in English. She lives in his house. The subject is she, but the house is his. Therefore, the normal situation here.
Therefore, the normal possessive pronoun. Let's take a look at some more instances. Я дивлюсь на свої руки. Я дивлюсь на свої руки. I am looking at my hands. I'm looking at my own hands. Who is the subject? Я. Whose are the hands? Mine. Again, same person. We are meaning the same person. So, я дивлюсь на свої руки. The reflection is happening. And therefore, we are using reflexive свої. Not мої. But свої. Next, я дивлюсь на твої руки. Я дивлюсь на твої руки. I'm looking at your hands. The subject is я, I, but I'm looking at your hands. The hands are your. Different persons, normal situation, normal possessive pronoun, твої. Just like in English. Next, вона веде свою машину. Вона веде свою машину. She drives her car. She drives her own car. The subject is вона and the car belongs to her as well. Same person, reflection, the magic of reflection, summons the spirit of the um, pronoun свою. But in a situation where він веде їхню машину, він веде їхню машину. He drives their car. We have a subject він. But the uh, possessive pronoun is ихня. The car is there. So, different persons, normal pronoun. Вони їдять своє морозиво and не їж моє морозиво. Вони їдять своє морозиво. They eat their ice cream. Вони їдять своє морозиво. The subject. Вони matches the possessive pronoun because the ice cream is theirs as well. Вони and своє морозиво. So instead of saying вони їдять їхнє морозиво, we say вони їдять своє морозиво. And next one is не їж моє морозиво. Here it can be a bit more complicated because like what, where is the subject in this um, sentence? Where's the subject? There is no subject. The subject is hidden. We don't see any pronoun. So what do we do? We see that the form of the verb yiz is telling us that there is an imperative sentence happening. Ne yiz moje morozevo. If you are confused by this sentence, I got you covered and I will leave you the link again somewhere here on my video about imperative pronouns. Okay? So ne yiz moje morozevo means you don't eat my ice cream, right? Ne yiz moje morozevo. So we don't say ty, we don't say you, but we understand that we are addressing you singular, right? Ne yiz moje morozevo. So, again, the subject, even though it's hidden, we understand that it's you, ty, but the ice cream is mine. So again, different persons and normal uh, pronoun. Next, вона дзвонить своєму братові. Вона дзвонить своєму братові. She is calling her brother. The subject is she and the brother is her. There is a coincidence, there is a match, there is reflection. So we need to change її, вона дзвонить її братові, to вона дзвонить своєму братові. Next, вона знає мого брата. Вона знає мого брата. She knows my brother. The subject is she, but the brother is mine. Different persons, that's why we are in the normal situation. We don't need to change anything. Now let's take a look at some more sentences. Я дзвоню своєму братові. Я дзвоню своєму братові. I am calling my brother. Again, to express the uh, match of the subject and the personal pronoun, I used the matching color. So, я дзвоню своєму братові. You see that the subject and the possessive pronoun are matching in the first sentence. So, we change я дзвоню моєму братові to я дзвоню своєму братові. And that's the proper way to say that. Я дзвоню своєму братові. I'm calling my brother. But in all the rest of the sentences. Я дзвоню твоєму братові. I'm calling your brother. Я дзвоню вашому братові. I'm calling your plural brother. Я дзвоню нашому братові. I'm calling our brother. Я дзвоню її братові. I'm calling her brother. We see that there is a mismatch, right? The subject 
and the possessive pronouns, all the possessive pronouns in the next sentences are pointing at different persons. And this is why we don't have to worry about reflection and do any changes. We are just using our normal possessive pronouns. Okay, now in the next set of sentences, I really tried hard to hide the matching uh, subject and personal pronoun, but I gave myself away with the colors. So again, they are reading our books, they, but the books are ours. Вони читають його книжки, they, but the books are his. Uh, skip next one. Вони читають мої книжки, they read my books. They are reading, they are the subject, but the books are mine. Вони читають його книжки, they, but the books are his. And вони читають її книжки, the subject is they, but the books are hers, right? So again, because there is a mismatch, uh, different persons. We are using normal possessive pronoun, but the sentence number three is вони читають свої книжки. Вони, the subject is they, читають свої книжки. They are reading their books. Вони читають свої книжки. And the books are theirs. So, again, coincidence of a subject and the personal pronoun. They are pointing at the same person. That's why the magic of reflection should happen and we need to change вони читають їхні книжки to вони читають свої книжки to point out that the subject and uh, the personal pronoun have to do with the same person next подивись на свої руки look at your hands подивись на свої руки look at your hands something a mother could tell to a child look at your hands they could use a good wash, right? Подивись на свої руки. Look at your hands. Again, imperative sentence. Подивись means you look, right? There is no pronoun, but we understand that we are talking about ты, you, singular, right? Подивись на свої руки. So the subject is ты, and the hands are yours as well, right? So you and yours, there is a match. We are using свої. Next, відкрийте свої книжки. Something a teacher could tell to a class, right? Студенти, відкрийте свої книжки. Students, open your books. Again, студенти, ви, you plural, відкрийте свої книжки. Open your books. You plural, the subject, and the books are your plural as well. Next, згадайте своє дитинство. Remember your childhood. Згадайте своє дитинство. In this case, again, we have an imperative that is addressing uh, to a group of people, right? You plural. So again, you plural, remember your childhood. The subject is matching the possessive pronoun. That's why we are using своє. Next, Згадаймо своє дитинство. Згадаймо своє дитинство. Here we are addressing a group of people that includes us as well, right? Let us remember our childhood. So again, згадаємо своє дитинство. Let's remember our childhood. We are remembering, we are the subject, and the childhood is our. Again, coincidence, magic of reflection, and we are using своє. Не згадаймо наше дитинство, but згадаймо своє дитинство. Okay, and now you will ask me, well, I'm still confused by this. Is it okay if I use a normal possessive pronouns uh, where I need to use сві, своя, своє? Can I just use a normal pronoun? Like, can I say something like я живу в моєму будинку instead of я живу в своєму будинку? Or, він зараз у його кімнаті, instead of, uh, він зараз у своїй кімнаті. Вони їдуть у їхній машині? Can I say that instead of, вони їдуть у своїй машині? Can I do that? Well, technically, you can, and you will be understood. But in Ukrainian, in order to sound like a native speaker, in order to sound authentic, you need to use a reflexive possessive pronoun where the subject matches the pronoun in person when they are pointing at the same person. Because if you are saying something like я живу в моєму будинку, він зараз у його кімнаті, вони їдуть у їхній машині, if I as a native speaker 
I'm hearing a sentence like that, it gives me the feeling that you are talking about some other person, not about the subject of the sentence, right? Right away, I'm feeling, well, there's something wrong. There is something, um, something isn't working. It's not the way it's supposed to be. So you can do that, but if you are uh, willing to sound properly and authentically, then you need to use the reflexive pronoun. So here is a tip. If you want to speak correctly, you should avoid using matching subject and a possessive pronoun in the same sentence. So if you have a sentence in your head in English or in your language where there is I and my, Ja, mi, you, your, ty, tvi, he, his, vin, yoho, she, her, vona, yi, it, its, vono, yoho, etc. Then you need to avoid that. How can you avoid that? By changing the normal possessive pronoun to the one that is reflexive. So if you want to say a sentence where there is I and my, ja, mi, you should say ja, svi instead. When you have a sentence in your head that says you and your, ti, tvi, you need to say ti, svi. Vin, joho, incorrect, vin, svi, correct, etc. And now, if you uh, watched my video on possessive pronoun, you might know this already. And these are some, some good news in the end of the video. That in Ukrainian, it doesn't matter whether the possessive pronoun is followed by a noun or it isn't followed by a noun, right? We don't make difference. It will still be the same pronoun. Right? In English, it's like my book, but the book is mine. In Ukrainian, it's moja knishka and knishka moja. All the same. Doesn't matter, right? So, if we want to use svi, svoja, svoje as an adjective, it has to undergo the declension. Because that's what we do with our adjectives in Ukrainian, right? So, Let's take a look at the declension and finish this video. So, svi, svi, masculine singular. Nazivni, svi, rodovi, svoho, davalni, svojemu, znahidni, svi, svoho, orudni, svojim, and miscevi, u svojemu, na svojemu, or u svojim, na svojim. Next, svoja, singular, feminine, nazivni, or nominative, svoja, rodovi or genitive, svojeji, davalni or dative, svoji, znahidni or accusative, svoju, orudni or instrumental, svojeju, and misevi or locative, na svoji, u svoji. Next, svoje, singular, um, neuter. Nazivni, svoje, rodovi, svoho, davalni, svojemu, znahidni, svoje, orudni, svojim, miscevi, na svojemu, u svojemu, or na svojim, u svojim. And next, svoji, plural, no matter what gender is, it will be the same for all gender if the number is plural. Okay, let's go. So, nominative, svoji, genitive, svojih, dative, svojim, accusative, svoji or svojih, instrumental, svojime, and locative, na svojih, u svojih. Oops, did I say we are going to finish this video after the declension? Um, not yet. Let's try and practice um, translating some of the sentences. Uh, they all are going to be with uh, the reflexive pronouns. Let's just try to translate them into English. Вони зрозуміли свої помилки. Вони зрозуміли свої помилки. Means they understood their mistakes. Next, ми знайшли свою машину. Ми знайшли свою машину. Take a moment. We found our car. Next, він прийшов у свій будинок. 
Він прийшов у свій будинок. He came to his house. Вона знає свою адресу. Вона знає свою адресу. She knows her address. Я забула свій номер телефону. Я забула свій номер телефону. I forgot my phone number. Громадяни поважають закони своєї країни. Громадяни поважають закони своєї країни. The citizens respect the laws of their country. Ми добре знаємо свої права і обов'язки. Ми добре знаємо свої права і обов'язки. We know our rights and obligations. Well, next. Позич мені, будь ласка, свою ручку. Моя не пише. Позич мені, будь ласка, свою ручку. Моя не пише. Could you please lend me your pen? Mine doesn't write. Next. Подивись на свої руки. А тепер подивись на мої. Look at your hands. And now look at mine. Next. Степан звільнився зі своєї старої роботи і знайшов нову. Степан звільнився зі своєї старої роботи і знайшов нову. Степан left his old job and found a new one. Next. Я люблю свою роботу. Я люблю свою роботу. I love my work or I love my job. And now let us try and insert the proper form of the pronoun свій, своя, своє, свої. Remember about the cases. Він завжди добре робить роботу. Okay? Робить що? Робить роботу. So we are dealing with accusative case. Робота is a noun of a feminine gender. Okay? Він завжди добре робить роботу. So feminine gender, accusative case, we will have Він завжди добре робить свою роботу. If you said свою, you were correct. Next. Ставте запитання, будь ласка. Ставте запитання, будь ласка. So, um, ask questions, please. Write something a teacher can tell after given the lecture. Ставте запитання, будь ласка. Ставте що запитання. Again, we are dealing with accusative case. And the noun запитання is of neuter gender. However, from the word itself we cannot tell whether we are dealing with singular neuter or plural right because the pytania will sound the same in um, singular and plural so here we can either have stavte svoji zapytania and that will sound like plural or stavte svoje zapytania if there is one question if that's singular Ставте своє запитання, будь ласка. Next. Підкажіть, будь ласка, прізвище. Підкажіть, будь ласка, прізвище. Again. Could you tell me, please, your surname? Right? So, підкажіть що? Підкажіть прізвище. Again, we are dealing with accusative case. Прізвище is of neuter gender, so we are going to have своє. Підкажіть, будь ласка, своє прізвище. Next. Ого, ти це зробила руками? Wow. Did you make this with your hands, with your own hands? Ого, ти зробила це руками? Again. Зробила чим? Руками. We are dealing with Instrumental case here, okay? Руки is plural. So, своїми руками we have instrumental case plural. Ти зробила це своїми руками. Ого, ти зробила це своїми руками? Wow, 
Did you make it with your own hands? Next. Rozpoczynajte prezentaciju, budi laska. Rozpoczynajte prezentaciju, budi laska. Start your presentation, please. Start your presentation, please. Rozpoczynajte szczo. Rozpoczynajte prezentaciju. Accusative. Prezentacija. Feminine. Singular. So, we will have. So, if you said svoju, you were correct. Rozpoczynajte svoju prezentaciju, budi laska. Next. Ja zavždy hotila mati vlasnu biblioteku. Ja zavždy hotila mati vlasnu biblioteku. I have always wanted to have my own library. Mati ščo? Mati biblioteku. Biblioteku is accusative. Again, mati ščo? Biblioteku. Accusative, biblioteka, feminine, singular. So... Same like in previous sentence, we will have Ja zavždy hodila mati svoju vlasnu biblioteku. Next. U njoho nemaje budinku, vin žive u zjomni kvartiri. U njoho nemaje budinku, vin žive u zjomni kvartiri. He doesn't have his own house. He lives in a rented flat. Okay? U njoho nemaje. After nemaje, we are usually using what? Genitive case, right? U njoho nemaje čoho? Budinku. Budinok is masculine, singular. So if you said svoho, you were correct. U njoho nemaje svoho budinku. Vin žive u zjomni kvartiri. Next. Vone je zališili druzjev i rodinu. Ta perejihali do inšoji krajine. Vone zališili druzjev i rodinu, ta perejihali do inšoji krajine. They left their friends and family and moved to another country. So here, vone zališili koho, in this case it's accusative, zališili koho ščo, right? Druzjev i rodinu. So we have two nouns here, druzjev. And rodinu. So we are looking at the first one, at the one that comes first. So vone zališili koho? Druzjev. Accusative case, plural. Vone zališili svojih druzjev i rodinu, ta perejihali do inšoji krajine. Let's take a look what we will have if we change the places. What if we say vone zališili rodinu i druzjev, ta perejihali do inšoji krajine. Then we will have to look at the word rodinu. Rodinu, again, ščo rodinu, accusative case, but it's feminine and it's singular. We would say, vone zališili svoju rodinu i druzjev ta perejihali do inšoji krajine. Next, Galina rozlučilася zi svojim čolovikom. Galina rozlučilася zi svojim čolovikom. Galina divorced her husband. So, um, Galina rozlučilася z kim? Kim, čim is instrumental case, right? So, čolovikom, instrumental, and it is singular and it is masculine, right? Čolovik is masculine, husband. So, Galina rozlučilася z Svojim čolovikom is the correct way to say that. Next, zapytaj u brata, či prejde vin na večirku v subotu. Zapytaj u brata, či prejde vin na večirku v subotu. Ask your brother whether he will come to the party on Saturday. Zapytaj u koho. Zapytaj u koho, zapytaj u čoho. Koho, čoho? Genitive. Brata. Masculine and singular. So, zapytaj u svoho brata, či prejde vin na večirku v subotu. Next. Zabere slova nazad. Ja ne hoču ničoho čuti. Take your words back. I don't want to hear anything. Zabere slova nazad. Here, zabere ščo. Zabere slova nazad. Accusative case, right? And slova is plural. 
So plural accusative will be свої. Забери свої слова назад. Я не хочу нічого чути. And now, finally, that is the end. Traditionally appreciating everybody who is supporting my channel on Patreons, especially the wonderful people whose name you see on the screen. Thank you everybody for watching. Don't forget to like this video if you enjoyed it or give it a dislike if you didn't. Also subscribe to my channel so that we can learn Ukrainian together. If you want to receive a notification every time I am uploading a new video, don't forget to tap on this little bell button down below. Also, don't forget to leave me a comment. Did I make it easier for you or did I not? Or just say anything in the comment. I will truly appreciate. Thank you so much for watching and I will see you in my next video hopefully very soon. Bye!